Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx games, and thinky fillers. I'm your host, Amanda Euler. Edward is currently on the road, and while he is away, the matriarch will still play. Today we're playing Ordus Ragni, designed and published by John Sudbury in 2014. I am joined by Matt. Matt. Just Matt. Just Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on the main board so that everybody can see what's going on, and he will be teaching. Yeah. All right. So this is Ordus Regni. Um, it is a historical card game set in the late Anglo-Saxon era, era in English history. It is a time of warring earls, minor kings all, they claim whatever lands they can, they establish fiefs, cultivate powerful vassals, and fight and engage in endless political struggles. All while the Vikings roam, not just the sea, but the land. It is truly a dark age, or is it? The Ordus Regni, the birth of the kingdom. Ordus Regni is a game inspired by this period, lasting for 600 years until the Norman conquest of 1066. The Anglo-Saxon era decides the future of a great kingdom that will be called England. The ancient world is dead, the world is reborn. Anyone can become king through politics and diplomacy, or by the blade. It is always, in the end, by the blade. Will it be you? Mm. So, anyway, I have to show off this rule book too, because this is one of the most fantastic rule books I've ever seen. It's so pretty. It's just, it's all like linen finished and all done in the, like the art style of the time. It's so. Very, I may just very fancy. I may just refer to the rule book some just because I like looking at it. <laughs> just because it's party. Yep. All right. So this is a medieval battle card game. Um, every player starts off with the same set of 90 cards that comes in this really cool wooden uh, card tray. Everybody, everything in this game is made of wood and pretty cards. Mm -hmm. So it's like it was made in that time period. But everybody would get the same set of 90 cards, and at the beginning of the game you would build your deck of 25 cards, including your palace. Everybody has a palace, so really 24 cards and the palace, of whatever you wanted out of that 90 cards. Each of the cards have a set of five, and you can uh, build your decks however you want. Uh, me and Amanda tonight will be playing with standard decks, um, which are the same as the learning decks that come with the game. Um, the learning decks have words on them. Yeah, let me. Yeah, you can say that over there. So you like, can... here's what one would look like. Yeah. And so then that's... here's what they look yeah. like without. Much yeah. prettier. Yeah, and you can flip that card over too, because every card is double-sided. It can be used as either the card on the front or the tower on the back. Mm -hmm. So kind of how that works, but we're going to play with the pretty cards tonight. So we're going to try to speak what we're doing a little bit so you get an idea of what the cards are and what they do, because the, the words on them aren't going to give you that much uh, to go on. We do have the player aid over there, though, uh, as Amanda was shown before. These are also, they're, they're made out of uh, linen, mm -hmm. um, and they show every card in the game and what it does. All right. Pretty fancy player aid. Yep. And from there, I will start. And I'm going to start by talking about our property cards. So property cards are the castles, the palace, the marketplace, the lands, the cathedral, and the church. All right. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the palace and the castles. So everything in front of us here is our kingdom. Um, each Earl's kingdom is on each side of the table, and a kingdom can consist of different vassals. Uh, every vass uh, every fief, sorry, fiefs. Uh, the fief is anchored by a castle or a palace. So this is a fief right here. This is a palace with these lands attached to it, and this is a castle with this land attached to it. So every other property card has to be attached to a castle or a palace. Then there are lands. Lands are going to be one of the main properties we use in this game. Lands are going to, when they're played out, get us army cards. I'll get more into the army cards in a little bit. Um, the market town. The market town, if played before a land, when a land is played, when you play this, you will then get two army cards. If a land is played by itself, you get one army card. Later on, you can do an action called recruit 
if you have lands. When you do that, if you have a market town next to a land, you will get two army cards. The most you can ever get for recruiting is two army cards. So even if you had, if I had another market town down here, I wouldn't get four, I would still get just the two. Lands also help you later on when you go to fight. Lands will help you in putting out armies. Mm -hmm. So this land here puts out two army cards, and this one puts out one. So that's what you can use to attack in battles. We'll get to battles a little bit later, but just know that you have to have lands for both recruiting armies and playing them out later on. Mm -hmm. Then we have the cathedral. Cathedral is like super church. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you have the cathedral, you are pretty much the pope. You are the leader of the church. Um, and you get to decide certain things um, in the game. Um, for being leader of the church. Only one person can have a cathedral. So if I have a cathedral out, Amanda cannot play a cathedral. But Amanda can play a church. One of the things uh, that happens in the game is to continue your life in the game, your deck is your life, and you have to eventually um, get the stuff from your discard pile back into your draw pile. Um, to continue playing and to continue your life. You do that by bequeathing your discard pile to your son and put it back in your pile, then you have now extended your life, or you've actually become your son, and then your legacy continues. Mm -hmm. I'll get into that in a little bit. But if somebody has a cathedral out, and you do not have at least a church out, and you don't have any religion whatsoever, you can't do that, <laughs> and you're blocked from doing that. Um, and that can, that can hurt you. So having a church out as well will help you, okay, you've at least joined the religion so you can do that part. Uh, the person with the cathedral is still the head of the church, so they still have a uh, say in some of the things that are decided later. But that's what the churches do and cathedrals. That is all the property cards. So now I'm going to get into the face cards. Our face cards are the champion, the prince, and the vassal. I'm going to talk about the prince first, because he's the one I was just, just discussing earlier. This is your, your heir. This is the heir to your throne. So you're going to put him in either a castle or the palace, and now he becomes a prince lord. Um, he has several abilities when he becomes the prince lord, uh, one of which is now he's able to inherit everything that you have in your discard pile. And we do that with a banner card. I'll get into these more in a little bit. But that's one thing he's able to do. Um, vassals. Vassals can also become lords as well. And they have special abilities when it comes to political things. Um, they can help you in political struggles. Champions help with jousts. So when we get into jousts, that's one thing. But they can also be lords. And sit in a palace as well. Let me put one more castle out, just so I can... You can have as many castles and fiefs out as you want. Each castle can only hold one lord, and these lords can be used in battles as well. So you can, you can push these guys into battles, and they can help you. When I get into battles, I'll, I'll get into exactly what their, what their stats are. These two guys... When they're put into battles, if you're attacking lands, instead of those lands of the other player being destroyed and discarded, you actually can get them. Um, which is very handy, because then you can build up your lands without having to actually put cards down of your own. Mm -hmm. All right. Champions. Yep, I went into that. Champions we'll get into when we get into jousting, what their special ability is. Uh, one more special ability of the vassal uh, we'll get into when we talk about political cards and when we talk about the Vikings. So I'll move on to political cards. So in this game, uh, in this, the decks we have, we currently have these three political cards. Uh, technically, there is one more called the Banquet, which uh, we don't have in our decks. Uh, this just lets you go through your deck a little faster. You can pull more cards. Um, actually, there are two other face cards as well I want to talk about. Uh, mercenaries and Monks. 
uh, mercenaries uh, can go out, and then you can attach army cards to them, and they're like a standing army that you can always use. Uh, monks can also be put into uh, castles, and their special ability is the other player has to show you their entire hand of cards. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have any of these in our deck right now. All right, political cards here. So the two nasty ones. We have Treachery and Intrigue. Treachery, uh, you play a Treachery card and attempt one of three things. Assassinate the other player's lord. So if they have a lord in a castle, you just go, I'm killing that guy. Uh, damage an Earl's hand. You go, I want two of your cards out of your hand. And just remove them and those get discarded. Uh, remove a mercenary. If, if we did have the mercenary in play, that would get destroyed along with any army cards attached to it. And that's what that does. Then we have the Intrigue card. The intrigue, you can steal properties. So somebody can play this against you, and they can steal up to two properties from one of your fiefs. So if Amanda played this on me, she goes, I want that and that. And she would get those. Mm -hmm. Steal armies from the reserve. You're going to have a reserve pile of armies uh, sitting over here, and you can play this card to just take two of those from another player. And steal a mercenary. So instead of taking the mercenary away, you just pay him enough and he switches sides. <laughs> he becomes your mercenary. Sounds like a mercenary. Yep. So, those are really bad things. And you don't want those to happen to you. They can be blocked. They are blocked by the allies card. So, if somebody plays that against you and you have an allies card in your hand, you just throw the allies card and go, nope, that's not happening. Then, the other side just, uh, gets to play... A vassal card. They can say, well, I'm saying that is happening. I'm playing a vassal card. Well, then you, if you have to have have and have vassal, can vassal right back. And this can go back and forth until nobody has any vassals left. Mm -hmm. Or you choose not to play them. Um, when they are played in this manner, um, if they're not in a castle, the ones in the castle, you can go, I'm just playing that. The ones from your hand, if you play them, are, disc are discarded to your discard pile. So you may or may not want to do that depending on how badly that card hurts you. But that's how it's blocked. And that's a political struggle. The banquet cards really are just a personal political card. They don't really uh, hurt anybody else, so those would never get blocked. Alright, banner cards. These guys, very important. They do three things as well. If you have a Prince Lord, you can go... I am going to now bequeath everything to the Prince Lord. So let's say this was my discard pile over here. I would say, I am bequeathing my Prince Lord to the discard pile. Then this would get shuffled up and put at the bottom of your draw pile. And now you've extended your life somewhat. If you were ever to go draw a card in your turn, every on your turn you're going to draw one card every turn. If you go to draw a card and you cannot, you are considered to have died of old age. You've just died out. You just did. You did. Yeah. But if you can do that, now you've extended your life somewhat and you can continue. All right. Those are all of those cards. So now I'm going to get into battles. Let me put my Prince Lord back out here. Over the course of the game, you're going to get some of these cards. There are only two kinds. There's the Knight and the Footman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they show up better over there? Probably so. Yeah. So the knight's on a horse and the footman is just a footman. Just on his feet. Yep. Yeah. So the knight is two attack, one defense, and the footman is one attack, one defense. Pretty much every card in the game is going to have a stat very similar to that. Mm -hmm. It's either going to be it's going to be a 2-1 or a 1-1. One, one. All right. Your lords in your castles are very similar. The champion acts just like a knight. He's a 2-1. Uh, the Prince Lord and the Vassal Lord are the 1-1s. One and you can put them into the battle straight from the castles without removing them. Um, and they can, they can fight for you. Or defend for you, depending on what side of the battle that you're on. And these cards will be over here. You'll get them randomly from that. And you could randomly get a whole bunch of knights or a whole bunch of footmen. Depends. Alright, so we're going to fight. So, and I'm going to have this from Amanda's point of view because I have all this stuff in front right. of me. 
So let's just say Amanda has enough lands to support this, but she is fighting me and she's coming at me with something that looks like this. So she's attacking me with two, four, five, six, seven. So I've got seven attack coming towards me. Amanda has three options of where she would like to attack. She can attack my wall or my, my set of towers, which is just called, we just call it the wall. You can attack a set of lands attached to a castle, or you can attack a castle or a palace. The castle and the palaces, uh, the palace has a strength of three. So to kill off a palace, you've got to get at least three damage through to the castle past the wall. Mm -hmm. um, the castles have a, da a strength of two. Everything else is a strength of one. All right, so Amanda has put this out, and let's say she is trying to attack this set of lands right here. So she's got seven damage coming to me. Three of it is blocked by my towers because she's got to get past the towers. If she were to attack the towers directly, and, there's, and if I don't put up any defense, all that damage would go to the towers. But right now she's got to get past this. So there is four damage coming to this area right here. So I decide that I have a couple of armies of my own and I can put them out here. I only have space for one, two, three army cards. And unfortunately, all I have are these. But I've also got these guys as well. So I can block now with this guy, this guy, and this guy. Effectively blocking one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is blocking three. Wouldn't have to do that many, but let's just say I don't have these guys. And I'm just fighting with my straight army here. So seven coming to us, to us past the wall, three, so that's four, and I'm blocking one, two, three. That means one damage will get through to one of these cards. So we'll do up damage in a minute, but I would have to pick one of these cards to go away since it is my, my, it's my lands here. I get to pick which card. Amanda probably would like for this to go away, mm -hmm. but I would probably say, no, I think I will kill the church. And the church would go into my discard pile. All right. Let's say I didn't put up any, def well, and one thing we have to do as well, I always forget to do this, so peanut gallery, don't let me forget to do this, <laughs> um, is we have to flip a battle card. So before any of the damage is dealt out, once we figure out how everything is going, then we're going to flip a battle card. So remember how I was talking about the church decides before? Well, there are some battle cards that say, if you're a leader of the church, you decide who wins. There are some battle cards that are defender wins. And there are some battle cards that are attacker wins. And there are three of each of these cards in there. If there's no leader of the church, then those are just normal battle cards, which that's what the rest of these are. These are normal battle cards. And actually, Amanda, you might mm -hmm. want to put these over there because it's really hard to distinguish between those two because they both have the big green horse yeah. on them. So that is attacker wins, and that is defender wins. The defender wins is easier to see because you can see that they're coming out of the gate, so it's the defender. Whoever's on the green horse, that's the one that's winning. The green horse is the winner. The green horse is the winner. So attacking, the green horse wins there and coming out of the gate the green horse wins there so for one of these cards to be flipped you have to at least have one person in the fight and that's kind of important because even if it looks like you're going to lose the battle completely you still have a little bit of a chance that maybe it'll work out in your favor but to get that you have to at least have one person to put into the fight all right so I'm going to shuffle these up real good. Okay. <clears throat> and let's just say for this particular fight, I'm going to pull a card, and that would be a normal battle. So then I would have to decide which one of these uh, would go away. If it had come up that it was not in my favor, and it was an attacker wins, everything Amanda does works, and nothing I put out does anything. So all of my uh, buildings would go away because all the damage would get through and none of my defense would have worked. So it has been, boop, all those go away. They all go in your discard pile, right? They all go in my discard pile. But if a church decides came up, then I would decide, 
hey, everything I did worked, nothing Amanda did worked, um, which would basically save all my buildings, and um, that's pretty much all that would do in this mm -hmm. scenario. All right, then we decide damage being dealt between our armies. I've got one, two, three damage going to Amanda, and Amanda's got, well, she's got all her damage coming to me, so these guys would go away, and three of hers would go away, and she would choose which three. She'd probably choose her footman. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's how a battle works. Um, one thing to note is if you do have a lord in the battle, let me get those guys back out here. You have a vassal lord or a and any of the other lords, and you put them into this battle, and you flip one of these battle cards that is not in your favor. Let's say attacker wins, and I had him in there. This guy would then be captured. Um, and he would either go over there to Amanda or actually he would actually go to my discard piles where he would go. Mm. He would go he would either be going to my discard pile and go away, or I could ransom him and give a land to Amanda, and then I could then keep him where he was. Okay. So. so if you have no land, it just it goes in your discard yeah. pile. And it could be a land. It could be any building you have. Okay. Any property you have can be used for the ransom. Okay. Um, that happens pretty rarely because um, it has to happen when you're on the bad side of one of these and you have at least yeah. one lord in the battle. But if that's your prince and you need to bequeath to him and that's how you're going to stay alive, then, hey, maybe just getting rid of a land or something isn't that... Or getting rid of a property isn't that big a deal. Right. All right. Let's go back over there. The one thing I'd need to talk about as well now is Vikings. So Vikings are going to come. These little black discs over here, every time me and Amanda go through a round, whoever starts, um, the person that's last will move one of these black cubes over. Black. Half half moons, half, half moon half things. Discs. Once all of them, well, once the very last one gets moved over. So in this scenario, once this one moves over here, the Vikings come, and the Vikings. Well, those are army cards. They got stuck in the Viking. Oh, pot. whoops. They look very similar because they're both white cards, but I'm looking mm -hmm. for a chieftain as well. There we go. So the Vikings come out. We each have, right now, one cube in this little leather bag. We shake this up. We pull it out. And Amanda. Amanda gets to control the Vikings. And they work just like they were her army. And they attack just like a normal attack. You pull a card just like you would. Mm -hmm. If I put somebody in, at least you'd pull a card. If not... Uh, it would just happen. And we move on. Basically, the Vikings are going to come and they're going to start battles happening regardless of whether we're nice to each other or not. <laughs> <clears throat> but if we are nice to each other, or we are not nice to each other and we fight before the Vikings come, this white one moves over and just moves right back. It keeps the Vikings from coming for a turn um, if we're fighting each other. But once all the black, uh, little, I don't even know what to call these things. Di I don't know. Disc, half, half moon, dips, half cube, th half disc <laughs> things. Blobs. Because they're. They look like the blobs from World of Goo. Yeah. So, um, as soon as they come, they keep coming. And they're going to keep on coming until the end of the game. Um, and then people are going to keep being able to control them. All right, let's say you want more control over the Vikings. Well, the vassals. That's one of the things they can do. They can go over to the Vikings and be played as an emissary, which lets you put one of your cubes in the bag. Now, I've got two cubes in the bag. Amanda's got one. I've got a little bit more sway over what happens when the Vikings come. Uh, the monks, which we don't have any in, our decks can also go over here. Um, it is said that the monks bring beer with them, <laughs> so they put two cubes in the bag. Um, what also happens when you do this is a black uh, thing moves over as well. So it causes the Vikings to come faster if you do that. Mm 
Okay, so we got through battles for the most part. Yeah, Vikings. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about jousting. Yes. Jousting is another thing you can do with your banner card. So to throw a joust, you just throw a banner card out and go, we're having a joust. Um, the other opponents can throw a banner of their own to opt out of a joust. And they're like, nope, I don't want to joust. Um, the reason for that might be is uh, you might be up for losing quite a bit in a joust. Um, so what happens in a joust is everybody antes in one of their uh, property cards, be it a land or a marketplace or anything. You ante in, and then that makes a little pool here of stuff that's going to be up for grabs. The next thing you do is either from your hand or from one of your castles or palaces is you're going to put in a champion. And that can be either a vassal, a prince, or the champion. The champion is going to be the best because he's going to be a wild card that you can use. The prince is going to be the high card. And the vassal is going to be the low card. And what we're going to have here is a little hand of poker, sort of. So let's say Amanda put in a prince and she put in something and she put in a castle. Um, I put in a land. I threw the I, I threw the joust, so I likely have a champion. Mm -hmm. Just because that's probably the best thing to throw in. And then we're going to take the jousting deck that has a set number of cards in there, and we're going to play two of them next to each one of our cards. That is a dud. That is a vassal. That is a prince. That is a vassal. So, the champion here works in my favor because now I have this as a wild, he can be either a vassal or a prince. So I have three of a kind vassals. Amanda has two of a kind princes. Even though that's the high card, it's still only two of a kind. So since I have three of a kind, then I win. If it was something like this, now Amanda only has one of a kind of each, and I would have two, two of a kind princes. Because that's wild. Because that's wild. So that can be a prince, or it can be whatever you need it to be. So that would give me two of a kind princes, which would be high, and then I would win that. So that's how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is a little bit more fun if you have multiple players. You can play this game up to six players. I'd probably not recommend six. <laughs> I'd probably say <laughs> three or four probably at most. But if you have a big pot, then you get a big pot of stuff, and you go in with this. Um, you can win a lot. So if I won this, I would get these two things and I could put them in my thieves wherever I wanted them to go and... And you get your champion back? Yep, I get mine back and you get yours back. And that would be that. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's holding a joust. All right. The other thing you can do with a banner um, is try to become king. So you put a banner out in front and say, I'm trying to become king. Um, then the next player has a turn. They can put a banner out and go, I'm contesting your right to be king. Um, as soon as you have two more banners out than anybody else, then you become king. When you become king, you get the king card. That doesn't mean you win, but the king gets to be, he's an unkillable mercenary. Um, he's there for you, and you can attach the royal army to him. So instead of having lands, you can attach army to that guy and use that in your battles. And that's the same way that a mercenary would work as well. Except for mercenaries can be easily killed off or switched to the other side, and he's going to be there forever. And he acts as a 1-1 one -one himself. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is everything we need to do before um, starting the game. Anybody right. have any questions yes. out there? If anybody has any questions, go ahead and ask them. I'm going to bring up back up the chat and the camera so you guys can see us. Okay. So on our turns, well, the first turn we're going to draw five cards from our deck that we have pre-built. Once you get further along in the game, um, you, can pre -build, you can build your deck however you want at the beginning. These. Yep, out of those cards. And the first time you draw your five cards, if you don't like what you see, you can shuffle those back in and draw one more time. I 
am okay with mine. I am also okay with mine. And we always start with our palaces out. That's our first uh, building in our fiefs. I'm going to make sure that we have just one cube in the bag. Thanks, Waymouse. <laughs> you just did it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And because that's what we're going to use to determine who goes first. I Amanda guess. goes first. So I will be in charge of moving these over after my turn. Don't let me forget that. <laughs> okay, I am going to play a, a prince in my castle. Right. Prince Lord. Prince Lord now. Right. Do you want to tower anything? Not right now. Free actions on your turn. You can take any cards that are in your hand and turn them into towers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a champion in my palace, and I'm going to put out one tower. Okay. Then I'm going to move this oh, let's move that back over there, okay. one over here, because we did not fight each other that turn, and it's back to Amanda. Okay. Um, oh, and draw a card. <laughs> yeah. And Dominic wants to know, how do the cards from the wooden card holders enter the game? They would if... We were building our decks. Yeah, at the very beginning of the game, you build your deck based on uh, from this. Right now, we're playing. We can actually move these off to the side because they don't enter the game yeah. uh, anymore once you build your deck. Okay, I am going to play a treachery card to kill your champion. And I wish I had an allies to back that up. I do not, yes. so he is dead. And I'm not going to tower anything. I'm going to put out a market town. Okay. And get nothing, because a market town doesn't do anything by itself. Right, not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Draw your card. And I'm going to draw Defense. my card. Okay. Oh, Viking Dot. Good call. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to also play a market town and draw. Yeah. Right. Now I'm going to play the land and get two army cards. I'm going to play, do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and attack. I'm going to attack your lands here. Okay. I'm going to attack with three. Okay. My vassal can attack too, right? Or no? Yeah, from your if you have one in your hand, yeah. you can certainly play him out. He will get discarded though. Right. Okay. I will defend... With two, two, and then you can defend with that guy okay, for the other, for one. The other one. So yeah, you cool. block everything I come at you with, okay. um, but all of our armies die. Mm -hmm. okay. And I draw a card. And we move the dot. Um, I'm going to play out a castle. And a tower. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to play out a castle. And I'm going to tower as oh, well. Oh, yeah, we should have done a battle card. We forgot uh, to do a battle card. It was a normal battle. It was normal, so it's it's fine. Yeah. It's normal. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. All right. Every time I forget that, I get so into whatever the battle is, right? I forget that you need to flip that. Draw two. Yeah. Yeah. Battle dot or Viking dot. Mm -hmm. I am going to recruit two. I'm 
I'm going to recruit two as well. Okay. And I'm going to tower nothing. Okay. And I'm going to move a Viking. There you go. Okay, I am going to play a land. Get you one yep. army card. And that's all. I'm gonna play a land up here for two cards. And my tower one thing. Okay. And move a Viking. Right. They will come next turn. Yes, they will. All right, I am going to put a champion in this castle. You can't see that. There we go. And I'm going to tower. Prince in the palace. Draw a card, and now the Vikings are coming. One, two, three. three so four. that is two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And Amanda has control of the Vikings. Okay. So four coming over here, mm -hmm. do what you will. <laughs> I'm going to attack your walls. All right, going to attack the wall. Mm -hmm. Am I going to defend? I'm going to defend one with him. Okay. And then two, three, four. Then we're going to see how that works out. Normal it's battle. just a normal battle. So I've blocked everything that you've got coming at me here, mm -hmm. and these guys die, and, and those guys, guys die. die. Keep my wall. Okay. Right, I am going to Recruit. Two? No, three. No, two. Two. Okay. Just two. Okay. I'm going to send a vassal over mm. to the Vikings and put another cube in the bag. And draw a card. And then now, since we don't have anything to move, one Viking comes out. And once there are three again, one more than the number of players, they attack again. So. All right. Um, let's see. Go wait on that. Um. What do I want to do here? Um, I think I am going to recruit, tower, draw, and a Viking comes out, right? No, 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 no after my, my turn. After my turn, yep. All right. Well, I'm going to put out another castle. Okay. And then I'm going to tower. I'm going to draw a card, and now Viking. Alright, I am also going to send a vassal. Right, put your cube in the bag. Now we're back to equal again. Mm -hmm. Draw. Hello, Asher. 
put a market town on this castle, okay. and then draw. And then the Viking comes, and then we see who controls them. This Ooh. time it is me. So I will attack your wall, okay. and that is four coming to your wall. Okay. You can play three cards, and you also have your prince, prince and your champion to block with. Okay. I am going to block... One, two, two, three, four. Okay. And the only thing to watch out for is if you get on the bad side of this, those two will get captured. And since it's the Vikings, you can't ransom them because the Vikings don't take ransoms. They don't take ransoms. But it's just but a it's normal battle. All right, cool. So these guys all die. Those, those two die. die. Those guys go back. Um, the guys in the castles don't die, they just go back. That's one of the powers of the, the vassal lord, the lords as well, is they're protected by their castles a little bit. All right, so it's to you, because that was after my turn, and the Vikings. Um, I'm going to play another castle. I'm running out of room here. Yeah. We can scooch up a little closer to each other there, too. I think I've got more room on my side than you do. Our DMZ is very short. Yes. Like me. <clears throat> I'll start another one of our... Here. That'll work. Alright. I'm going to recruit. So I'm just going to get two cards. And draw a card. And bring out another Viking. I'm going to place my cathedral. There you go, Amos. There's one. <laughs> and... That's it. That stinks for me, because now I cannot uh, bequeath. bequeath to that person there. Although I only have one thing in my discard, so I don't want to quite do it yet mm -mm. anyhow. But... I'm going to have to do something about that cathedral before I can. Which may cause me trouble. We shall see. I'm just going to recruit again. Okay. Draw a card. And another Viking. Me as well. So I'm going to return again. Those the wrong way. Whoops. Well, good thing I didn't even look at them. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't much to look at. Okay. Footman, huh? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to go ahead and attack your wall. Okay. Hi, Tony. Hello from Origins. One, two, three, four. So I can uh, use four cards. I'm going to attack your wall for two, three, four, five. Come into your wall. Okay. So I can I can defend with my yep. guys Yeah, so you here. can block with those two. One, two, two three, four, five, right? Yep. So you can play three cards out of your hand there to block as well. So I shall. You're blocking with five. Mm -hmm. I'm coming at you with five. We will flip this card. It is a normal battle. And, yep, so... These guys all die. Those guys all die. Womp womp. Womp womp. All right. Um, so since you attacked me, a Viking does not come out. No, it still does. Because that's only until the black... Th uh, this only stops the black things from coming. Oh. But this does come out. I was hoping for a one-two punch there. Yeah. Of taking down the wall and then possibly getting the Vikings <laughs> to get in there and maybe destroy that cathedral. Did not work. That's, it didn't. And, nope, you get the Vikings anyway. Okay, I will uh, attack your wall with one, two, three, four, five. So five coming at my wall. Yep. I have very little army left. 
and you know what? Five is coming through. Even if I block with those two, I still only save one. I'm okay with that wall going away. Okay. So we'll see what happens. All right, so Probably wall, bad things. Wall goes away. Vikings go away too. Yeah. Uh, Vikings stay. Oh, they stay. I okay. did not fight them. You didn't fight them. So they just stay here. They just stay there as a looming menace. <laughs> um, one reason is if I don't kill any Vikings, maybe I'm hoping to get the Vikings because another one's going to come out. They're going to get stronger. Mm -hmm. That could be bad, but it could be good too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Not sure. All right, so it's me again. So it's back to you. I will... Let's see. I'm looking awful vulnerable over here. There you are. So I can, the armies, I can play one, two, three, right? Yep, and then and those two those guys two. as well. And, and he's he, a two. He's a two and he's a one. So you got three right there plus whatever you throw yeah, in. So let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So here's three more. Oh, crap. So that's <laughs> one, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. I've got no wall. Mm -mm. Um, what, are, what are you attacking? I need uh, to know. Let's, let's attack your... And go for the palace? Let's go for the palace. Go for the big money. Yeah. Okay. Battle for right? Um, I've got to decide what I'm throwing in. Okay. I'm, I'll at least block with that guy so we get a card. Do I even worry about this guy? He's likely going to die. I think I just, I'm at the will of the cards. Okay. The bad thing is you've got that. I've got the church. So even if the church decides, it's an attacker wins. That did not go well for me at all. I had the green horse. So this guy would be captured. Okay. Um, but. Do you want to ransom him? This is all going away. going away. I'd have to ransom one of these mm -hmm. to get him back. You still have that. No, I don't care about him. Okay. It's fine. Okay. This all goes away. Okay. Now you have a discard pile. Uh, yeah, I have a discard pile now. I have nothing to leave it to. Well, okay. well done. Thanks. All right. All right, so, so they... Th I attacked... I killed one of them. One of them dies. With my prince. The rest of them, you just get back. And they right. stay they, they're, out. Yeah, they're there until this turn right now. And I draw. Yep. And now it's you. Yep, so if I'm... Staying in this. Oops. You didn't see that. I didn't see anything. So nothing. Nope. Um, prince in the castle here, and then these two things become walls. Okay. And draw. And a draw. And then Viking. And then I hope, like crazy, this is mine. It is not. It is yours. Yep, it is mine. They shall attack. Your You've got one, two, three, four, five, six coming mm -hmm. through. I have no Nothing. lands yeah. and that guy. Yeah. This is one, one two, two three. three defense. This is two. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's coming through to there. So I've got uh -huh. six, five, four, three. Two still gets through. This all goes away. So you have. He would be ransomed off, but the only thing I have left is this that would kill me. I can't do that. Right. So. This well, is, and they're Vikings, so they wouldn't... Yeah, the, 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 Vikings the Vikings wouldn't... Rain, the right Vikings would just kill them anyway, yeah. so... So they stay out. They stay out, except for one. I did have him in. Oh, forgot to flip the card. Darn it. Oh. Gotta flip the card. Normal, Normal battle. battle. So that was gonna happen anyway. Yes. So one your walls of those, go away too, yeah? Um, those, we went past them. You did? Okay. So right. you, you went past so the walls, so they did not go away. That's the one that dies. Yeah. Um, not looking good for me over here. Um. You can go for the death blow now because all you have to get rid of is this. Yeah. Um, because the towers don't count. If you have nothing in, no fiefs left, then you're done. All right, well, might as well then. Yep, I think that's probably your play. Yeah, so... Two, two, three, four, five. 
five. So you're attacking this. Mm -hmm. It gets past that. Mm -hmm. I don't. I well, that actually doesn't oh, happen. Doesn't happen. I don't have anything that in there. Right. It would have been a defender wins yep. had I anything. I have nothing to defend with. I've I got mean, no lands. I've got no lords, and unfortunately, nothing I can play from my hand. So this goes away, and I am done. Amanda wins. Dun, dun, dun. Wow. Well, that took twenty minutes. Yep. That's it. Sometimes the games can go longer. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're shorter. Um, but yeah, this was a short game. I usually like to play a couple of rounds of it. Mm -hmm. um, we can play again. I don't know. Let's leave that up to the peanut gallery. Yeah, what do you guys do? What do you guys think? Do you want to do you want to see one more? Yes. Do you want to you want us to go again? If you do, then let us know. If you don't, then we will go have coffee and watch TV. <laughs> Mortal Wombat. Franny calls she says I'm a wombat. Chris Wood says there's two copies in the geek market right now. One costs an arm and a leg. The other, your firstborn. Yeah. Right now, um, there, it's on sale on ordisregni.com, but it's pre-order. Uh, unfortunately, we just if you had gotten in on the, uh, the Kickstarter that they just did, you could have gotten the playmat and the game. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's why they're out right now is because they just did the Kickstarter, which one of the rewards, they, they kickstarted the playmat, but you could get the game with it. It's so weird. Um, but if you really have a hankering to play it, it's on Steam mm -hmm. as an app, and the app is fantastic once you know how to play the game. Yeah. So watch this and then play the app. Yeah, so you know how to play it now. Yeah. So. Um, All right. But, yeah. So we are, we are doing best two out of three. Okay. All right. <laughs> and I will promise, because sometimes the game can actually go on for a long time, if it looks like I'm definitely going to die, like the last thing I had there, I will concede. That is a part of the game as well. You can always concede with uh, with grace. Okay. Because usually you can, after a while, see it coming. Right. And reset the bag. Three, one for me. Two back in there. We'll just play with the same decks. Yeah. It is kind of fun, fun between rounds to switch up your deck a little bit too, because you can always swap out cards for other cards, put more of something in, less of something mm -hmm. else. Uh, if you want to go more intrigue heavy or more um, political card heavy, you can. Uh, you can go more lord heavy, where you just have a bunch of castles with a bunch of lords and no lands, and you just use those every time to attack. Uh, that's kind of fun. Oh, and I threw my palace, palace in there. In there. So, palace back out. And we will start again with you this me time. this time. Okay. So Amanda, you are in charge of the Viking, Viking dots. markers. Viking markers. There. That's <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I like what I have here. Me too. We'll do. A market town and one tower. Draw. And I will draw. And I will do. A prince lord. Becky Dot. Land armies. Draw. All right, I'm going to do a land. I don't have a market town, so I only get one army. Becky Dot. Send a vassal to the Vikings and put another cube in the bag. I'm going to recruit Viking Dot. Another land. Two 
Where are my cards? Okay. Draw. Castle. Backing up. Draw. Oh my gosh. Other land. Two more cards. And two towers. Yeah, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna just gonna recruit and draw. Dot. All right. Yep. I'm attacking. Okay. So, let's go. Let's calculate, and you can have three defense right now. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for your palace. Okay. One, two, three. Four, five, six. That's two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come into your palace. And I can attack with two. You three. can you can put I you mean, can defensive, defensive you one. can defend with one. I'm going past your tower, which is defending for one, and this which is one. So you, you have at most a defense of three. I only have to get three through to kill your palace. Well, then I might as well not waste anything, right? Um, if you put that guy in, at least, he won't die, and you flip a card. Yeah, we'll do that. So the card flip could help. Okay. It does not. It's hoping for defender points. All right, so that comes through. One of these guys dies for me, and that whole stack goes away. He goes away as well, yeah? Yeah. Okay. That sucks. Yep, sometimes it goes real fast. Yeah. That one went real fast. And I draw a card. Okay. Hmm. I will play a land. You get one army card for that? Yeah, and the tower. Draw. And, yep. Oh, wait, and this would have come over because I attacked you, then it would go back, so okay. no Viking dot. Okay, you go. Another land. Jeez. Yeah, they just all came up in a row. It's kind of, well, I'm a little bit vulnerable here too, because if, if you killed that off, then <laughs> you yeah. lose all of it. Yeah. So. But you have so many armies. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can defend with a lot. Yeah. A treachery, uh, uh, an intrigue right now would be real good for you. Yeah, if probably. I only had one. All right. Um, and do a land. I think, yeah. That. Draw. I can do oh, I forgot to, forgot to draw my last turn. No, just... Oh, I'm going to go ahead and attack again. Yeah. Yeah. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, Jeez. seven, and I can do eight, and I will attack this. Yes. And you can defend with, if you defend with at least one, you get a card flip. And it's a normal battle, so. It's hoping. Yeah. Okay. So that was quick. Yeah, that was very quick. Okay, so best two. Best out of two out of three. So one more. One more. One more. All right. So you get that back and that back. Oh, there's mine. So, land rush. It yeah. was. That was crazy. Like, okay. Land that, landed up. All of them. Yeah, there's only five in there. Mm -hmm. 
Which is funny, because last time I didn't see them hardly <laughs> ever. How it goes. No, I'm going to tore one of your so, pink sleeves. So there is some randomness to the yeah, game. Yeah, but there, But that's what, what, at the beginning of the game, that's what you're kind of mitigating by building your own deck. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to do a certain tactic, you throw more of those cards in and yep. less of something else. Yeah, for sure. So... These decks are pretty balanced for the most part, mm -hmm. so that's why we're kind of using those. But yeah, all right, we did reset that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again. I will start again. One, two, three, four, five. I am okay with that. Okay, I am okay with mine as well. Right. Market Town. And the Tower. Alright. And draw. And then do the exact same thing. Bike and dot. Yeah. Usually a land and a tower or a market town and a tower is a good first first move. Land. That. I and roll. I am a copycat. Viking dot. Let's, uh, let's do something interesting. Okay. Let's have a joust. Oh, okay. So, in a joust, you have to put in a face card. And I'm going to put in a champion. Yeah, me too. Champion as well. Then you have to ante in one of your either lands from here or from here. Your choice. Uh, it has to be a property card. I will I'm, do a land from my hand. I will do a land from my hand too. Okay. And then we do the joust deck. Since we hadn't done this yet. Yeah, so. might as well. Dud, dud, prince, prince. Dud, dud, that. So uh, I win with win. two princes. Yes, you do. Or, or two vassals. Either, Either one. one. Would work. Either one would work. So these cards go over here. We get these back. Actually, he goes back to where he came from. And I get, get lots of land. I don't get the armies for them, though. So There's that, at least. And I discard the banner. Okay. A little dangerous to do because I know there's only two banners mm -hmm. in this deck and I need those to bequeath, but I decided to try something just interesting. It. Okay, I am going to recruit. Oh, and I need to draw a card. I can dot and draw. Turn, sir. I'm going to recruit as well and draw a card. Okay. I will create a Prince Lord. And Viking Dot. Mm. I'm going to recruit again and tower. Okay. Same. Recruit, tower, Viking Dot. Draw. Alright, time to attack again. Alright. So, I can do six cards here. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and that guy. So that's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I will... There's no reason for me to waste any of my armies, and he's going to die anyway. So I one, put one in. One we'll in see what the card what does. Nope. Normal battle. Okay. Are you going? You went directly for my palace, I assume. Yeah. Yep, I went directly for your palace. Um, next that was ten. I had to go past these mm -hmm. for two. You threw one in. So. Yeah. Yep, that was another quick one. Yep. All right. Well, you win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the land. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I'm a giver, and yeah. I just, I am such a giver. That would have gone completely differently had that joust gone it would. differently. That, hey, that was, I mean, people got to see a joust, so that's all right. Yeah. 
All right, did so sorry that that kind of <laughs> the first one lasted a while and the second one like boom boom yes yeah, one, yeah so two out of three yeah, um lasted as the two other two lasted as long as the first one all right yeah so anybody have any questions or comments or anything oh the pmp version is really good because there are text on the cards so yeah it's, it's, the, like it's the, the same as these yeah mm -hmm. I don't actually want to you'll hear i can up. show the tableau yeah it looks it's, like these yeah they give you those with with it Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what the PMP version is, is those. Yeah, and it has exactly what they mm -hmm. all do and the strength and everything on the side, yeah. on the back. Oops, and you print your other yeah. accoutrement. Yes. You can use your regular stuff. And yeah, and pennies or whatever yeah. else you have laying yeah. around. Yep. Well, um, thank you for playing with me. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Um, I, said, I, I really enjoy this game. Um, sometimes it doesn't last very long. Yeah. Um, usually when you play the app, um, it goes real quick as well. You mm -hmm. play several rounds of it. Mm -hmm. um, I do like playing it with three and four as well, because then you it's more of a you have more more people in. It does have player elimination. There are uh, some variants that eliminate the player elimination. <laughs> um, you get to actually play as the Vikings, I think. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's an interesting game. Mm -hmm. I like the theme of it. Yes. I like how it. Yeah, you have to leave stuff to your your son. Yeah, that's interesting, and I like mm -hmm. the the art's pretty. Yeah, the way that you know the, all the different cards work obviously is cool, and the the fact that you can build mm -hmm. your own deck and it's just it's and there's a, a whole bunch of yeah. there's a whole bunch of different ways to play and variants on their website as well that you can download different play mats for. There's a co-op version. There's um, a whole bunch of different things. So, cool. and there's a whole bunch of stuff we didn't do in here that you can do with other cards mm -hmm. in the deck as well like the monks uh, become the king yeah. the monk stuff the the banquets which if you play one of those you draw more cards uh when you draw mm -hmm. actually you get to draw two i believe banquet cards played action to draw two cards from your old deck nice so you you eat a whole lot yes and you, but you die sooner <laughs> well that sounds about right really yeah all right well um this is thus endeth my second week yeah second week i guess yeah. second third week second week of live streaming and i will be back next week as well so taking a little bit of time off because we'll get a little, little tired just, just a little tired so um on behalf of edward and thank you very much to our 691 patrons that we currently have that are supporting us and helping us do this being able to bring you live streams and our podcast the podcast did release this morning so go over to heavycardboard.com check that out and um yeah, so on behalf of Edward, who is at Origins right now, my name, I'm Amanda Euler. And I'm Matt McChesney. <laughs> Have a good rest of your day, guys. Good night. Good night.